baby girl. You know how it's going down. 2003, do or die. JP, what? Sunday, time to dispel some FUD because I'm in that type of mood. And if it wasn't for my good friend Matt over here, you know, showing me some things, and then afterwards I was just like, what the fuck is she talking about? She is totally just trying to cause division. So I figured it's time for me to give a great explanation because that's just what I do and that's what I like doing anyway. So, Matt, how are you? Excellent. Ready to get this fucking baseball game started. Oh, da 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 And up to the plate, here comes Roberts. How are you, my friend? Yeah, we're doing great. What's up? Oh, time to 
dispel some bullshit. And then uh, I have to, uh, of course, announce to my leader, Leo. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I love how it's a short, sweet, and simple say, I'm good. But do not ever do the train thing in the middle of do or die. Just, just, yeah, just please for that one. Just respect to the, the grandpas of do or die from Chicago. I have to give them a, that shout. And he didn't mean They it. should have had trains in their, uh, in their song. So mm. shame on them. This is shame on them. I totally agree with that. Changing so, it from do or die to do and die. Exactly. So do and die. So evidently, uh, Markets with May did a show with, uh, you know, the De Niro. Um, real name franchisee, but yeah, uh, the De Niro. Um, going on there and trying to explain bonds. And trying to explain the differences between, you know, corporate bonds and what's the inflection of like the debt. What does it mean for AMC? Why we should be focusing our blame not on the people that are actually holding the debt bonds, but the people that are actually, you know, giving the uniforms, doing the popcorn, doing all the intricacies like your uniforms, like. Um, why am I blaming them? And that's not, that's not the correct way to actually state this. So up above is the post that she wrote. And I will read it all to you. Okay, so now I know why the trigger on AMC this morning. Certain folks have been talking bonds and possibly what I'm saying makes them feel threatened. They put in hard work and some of what they have learned is right. Let me just help with the missing stuff, misunderstandings of, of bonds and how they relate to stocks and the company's health. Buying AMC bonds does nothing to the equity holder especially if you're buying plain vanilla subordinate bonds. Your bet is the company does not go bankrupt. You are aligned. Also, there's nothing special about subordinate debt, aka most of the retail bonds, aka the ones I own. So first and foremost, why is she admitting to owning bonds? She's a bond girl. Uh, I understand that, but I, that's why are you publicly going ahead and addressing your position? She's she's been she's bond. been bullish on AMC bonds for a while. I understand that, but th that's not the point I'm trying to make. Matt, can you explain? She's a banker, and bonds have value if the holder. She's a banker. What bank? Future. I don't know that information. I'm pretty sure she's retired. No, she's not retired. One, two. She's a commentator, but she did. She does work for a bank. She's an actively. She's an analyst advisor for for a bank. Like next Boston. Friday, she's getting Mark. paid, uh, paycheck. B works at the bank. I don't think directly, but as a as an advisor to advisor. Like okay, okay, like gotcha. Like consultant. Yeah, basically. So her interest in bonds would be that, that because AMC's success, um, then the holder of the bonds would be at less risk, making them more valuable. But at the same time, you don't want to lose your bond share because then you lose your cash cow interest profit. So on one sense, yes, you want them to do well, but you also don't want them to do so well that, that you no longer hold an asset against the company's wellness and ability to pay the interest cash flow on that debt. So the first and second liens, 1L and 2L, have covenants related to disallowing share buybacks, dividends, etc. The 2L debts are also quite a high rate. Neither bond nor equity holder wants anything other than the company that does not go bankrupt. Right now, dilution will happen whether it is A, 
to buy the bonds in the open market at a discount, aka what happened in December of 2022, B, in order to exchange bond financing, which has a time limit with non-duration financials equity, which has no time limit, aka what happened in December of 2023, or just a cash raise to manage working capital aka August of 2023. If you're going to get mad at the bondholders, you might as well get mad at the popcorn vendors, the people making AMC chocolates, the company that makes uniforms, etc. All use the cash that it's raised. It's a red herring designed to divide investors needlessly and wind, wind up folks for no reason. Buying subordinate debt does absolutely nothing except give the bond price something that is more in line with what its bankrupt risk is, thereby demonstrating demand for bonds. This is actually not that different from the price of equities being underpriced. Demand for AMC debt helps, not hurts, the debt, given you have current negotiations happening. However, it can also somewhat negative if and only if you were going to use all the cash to buy back debt. If you're trying to do a debt for a stock exchange, it would actually be either way, depending on how precisely you do it. For example, the 2025's trade at a yield to maturity is almost of almost 24%. That is a one year rate. If AMC went to the bank, what rate do you, do you then think they would get? Uh, would quit, it be because I want to put a perspective on that because I did some math. Do you realize that for mm -hmm. every billion dollars in a d value in a debt bond is twenty million dollars in servicing to that bond at for every two percent? So mm -hmm. it's costing the company twenty million dollars a year at every two percent rate of a billion dollars worth of bonds. So if you take that times four and a half, and you multiply that times ten. That's what it's costing us annually. <sighs> so, supposedly this is a one-year rate. If AMC went to the bank, uh, would it be a CCC negative corporate OAS spread over the Fed's rate? Links. I didn't see the link. So, um there's no link below, um, but yeah, um, or of approximately 13.5% or B, would it be the 24% rate that the 2025s trade at? And again, I have said this all always, I don't care if you buy the bonds or not. I report on the AMC bonds because I am a financial commentator and that's what I do. Since what happens with the debt is very important to the equity holder, I think it's helpful to others who are trying to watch their equity investment and get someone who actually knows about bonds well enough to talk about it. Dun, 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 dun. But at the des desire to separate investors and AMC is super messed up and most definitely does not help the community or the company, as always, let me know what's confusing. Happy to help. So I decided after Matt showed me this, I decided, well, you know what? I know enough about bonds. I'm pretty good at it. Considering he used to underwrite them. Why don't I explain it? <laughs> so, I mean, some of the things, I mean, Matt, I, I really want you to kind of go over some of those conversations that you had with me because, and specifically the one that you asked a question about, because that is so important. You're talking about the issuance of bond exercisable dilution to reflow? Yeah, what, what your response, yeah, what your response First was. First off, she didn't this. know what FF was. And then she said basically that she don't understand retail jargon sometimes was her reason for questioning like what's free what's ff <laughs> um the second my my point was that when you when the company buy uh issues 
funds or debt for cash, right? And it has a term, and the term is exercisable for shares, right? Um, you have to understand that all of that generally in Wall Street is priced into the price already. They're already looking at future dilution because they do look that far ahead. So when you take 2020 and the entire shutdown and all the selling of that debt, that's why they were shorting the shares because they were counting on that future dilution as locates for the shares that were they were short because they thought that them bonds would in turn expire with 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 a nominal value of exercisable equity to cover their short position right and close it and take the profits off the shorts or even that the company would go bankrupt and they'd pay zero taxes on all their gains from the short position while collecting all the interest service payments for the term of that debt so when that future issuance is already priced into the into the price by the same institutions who own the debt, you get this false narrative that it's diluted. Yes, it is diluted the free float in, in that locked up shares that are privately owned now become part of the free float, raising the free float value, right? Total. So the tradable shares, but it's not really diluted until they not only exercise the shares, but then sell them into the market. So some bondholders with with less than with with uh, actual bullish interest may not want to actually sell their share rates at exercise. They may want to hold on to them for a future long value that's higher than the most of them are going to hold. So if they're not selling them into the market, it's not diluted. It's no different than when they issued all the apes to 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 retail. Unless we sold them into the market, yes, it was reflected as a value of the total shares outstanding for the company. But if they're not sold to the market, it's not dilutive to the price. Now, they made it dilutive by naked selling shares yes. for future locates of, of, of retail selling their ape. So... And it was ape that was never even delivered as 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 a locate because there was no locate available for them to deliver. The other point of it is, and Matt said this, is that they want their most bondholders are going to hold on to their rights. They're not going to relinquish that because that no, and the, that's your that's why you get these renegotiated terms and interest rates for future for extended term dates on the bonds because they don't want to let go of their that interest cow that of of service payments of 20 million dollars per billion per two percent so 20 million at two percent if you multiply that times 10 there's your 20 percent toggle right that's 200 million a year now multiply that by four it's damn near a billion dollars a year in debt service <laughs> they don't want to fucking exercise their right for shares when they have a cash cow that's paying them biannually of nearly a billion dollars a year. So what do they do? They renegotiate with the company. They keep the share price down so that they can't raise the equity to pay off the bonds or a, a collateral, if you think of it about it, is your mortgage and your house is the equity. Your house is the shares. The mortgage at the bank is the bond. It's a contract for payment with interest. They don't want you to pay off your house. They want you to refinance it, extend the term, so they can continue to collect interest service payments because that's their cash cow. Yeah, it's the payments. That's what you want, especially when you're holding on. to. I mean, that bond is gold to a bondholder. So... I'm going to explain this. I'm also going to explain. One more thing, sorry. And if you paid off that debt because you weren't able to get the price high enough to dilute and raise enough cash to actually buy back all your debt and not have that billion dollars a year service fees on $4.5 billion, that's all future net. Unrealized future net because you're not paying that gross value out as a cost 
it becomes bottom line net, which bottom line net equals dividend payments, share buybacks, increased share value, which would fuck the shorts. Correct. So in, in this link, I have also given you guys some definitions. So buying AMC bonds, subordinate debt, dilute, uh, dilution, impact on equity holders. I've given you guys basically a blueprint and notes to understand the bond buying process and actually understand what you're talking about when it comes to the bonds. So without further ado, hey, May, your light's out. Time to talk truth about AMC bonds. Ah, the melodrama of the financial markets. And let's take a moment to address the theatrical monologue on the AMC's morning frenzy. The narrative suggests that buying AMC bonds is as impactful as choosing between popcorn flavors at the cinema. But let's not kid ourselves. Even plain vanilla subordinate bonds have their own sprinkle of excitement don't they? The claim that the bondholders are merely cheerleaders rooting for the company's solvency without affecting equity holders is like saying the audience saving the audience applause doesn't reach the actor's ears. Of course it does. The bond market whispers can turn into a roar that echoes through the stock market halls. And what's this? Subordinate debt? The unsung hero with no special powers? Well, every superhero has an origin story. And in the financial universe, these bonds might just save the day when senior debts come knocking. Now, onto the thrilling saga of dilution. As a tale old as time, or at least as old as the company's last cash crunch, whether it's a strategic buyback of bonds a dashing of debt for equity swaps, or a gallant cash raise, each act plays a crucial role in the AMC epic. But wait, there's a twist. Getting mad at bondholders is like blaming the, po the popcorn for the movie plot holes. They're all part of the AMC experience, contributing to the company's cash flow one way or another. Go ahead, Cornelius. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, I, I only got a minute, I just but I wanted to drop this thing to remind everybody too. Um, everything you guys are saying is is great and but but you guys are talking about the institutional bondholders. You're talking about the ones that hold the actual lean notes from AMC. Um, what what May and Tony and a lot of other people that discuss bonds and when they talk about bonds, they're, they're talking about the, the institutional leverage points that um, that these large institutions and banks have with companies that hold their bonds. Well, but then they're also talking about the um, tradables at the same time. And this is really a very uh, miscommunication uh, where they're they're sidestepping the direct um basically the direct uh distinction between the two the 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 bonds that that they typically talk about as the tradables that you would go out and buy as retail are not um they are not part of the debt holder uh agreement with amc so they don't they don't bring cash to amc they don't do anything they are nothing but derivatives based on the liens against amc yeah so, so the i'm equity going into backing the difference of retail traded bonds is the the, the the first lien holder anything traded outside from the first lien holder is basically the first lien against amc retrading the um a portion of the of the monetary value of that first lien in other words, if you don't like the exposure that you have to the debt or you need cash, you can use that as an equity trade to forward that risk exposure to somebody else. That is correct. Right. But again, what what retail purchases on public or on these other retail sites 
are yeah, not those the are first. All bullshits. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but those are the ones that they're talking to you when you're on YouTube watching their video. Those are the ones that they're talking about trading and the ones that, that retail can go and actually buy into and trade and sell. You, you're not a big whale. You're not a big institution. You're not taking part in the actual um, the debt and the equity situation that the first lien holders no, are part of. Fractionalized part of the whole. It's a derivative. It's not. It's based on the value, but right. it isn't part. It, of. It's 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 a subcontract to the to the first lien holder. It's a value. So if the first lien holder Correct. has a debt value of of one billion of that four point five billion dollars, right? He can forward contract what you're saying, basically an option contract for somebody else to hold a portion. It's, right. It's billion. a future. It's right. a future contract. It's an right. option. It's so, a derivative. So what they're doing basically is saying, I need cash and I got this equity value against this 24%, you know, service payment that I will for forward you, you know, four, eight, 10% of while I pocket the difference for you to hold the risk asset against the lien of my first lien. So now they're collecting cash based upon that because On the evidently premiums. they're having, yeah, well, they're of the retail. So, so it's just another correct. way for them to keep uh, sucking up premiums off of us, but I got to go guys. Correct. Um, good yep. talking to y'all. Yep. What, and just to kind of, explain that a little bit more that's why you're seeing like places like public that are going ahead and posting amc bonds and for sale and that's so this way they can basically steal the money from retail to go ahead and continue the game of what they're doing so back to what i was talking about so the narrative suggests that buying amc bonds is as is as impactful as choosing between popcorn flavors at the cinema. Here's the kicker. Buying subordinate debt doesn't just align with bankruptcy risk. It's a love letter to a company showing faith in its future. It's not just about the price. It's about the demand, the belief, the, dare I say, passion. As for the grand finale, the 2025 bonds with their yield to maturity stealing the spotlight is a financial cliffhanger. Will AMC secure a loan at the corporate OAS spread? Or will the bank demand the, a performance worthy of a 24% yield? Only time will tell. So, dear investors, don't let the desire to separate bondholders from stockholders turn into a Shakespearean tragedy. In the end, we're all part of the same AMC audience, watching the same screen, sharing the same hopes for a blockbuster ending. And remember, in the world of finance, something or sometimes the pen is mightier than the sword, or should I say the bond is mightier than the stock. This is what she should have said to make what she wrote correct. Let's clarify the relationship between AMC bonds, stocks, and the company's financial health. When you buy AMC bonds, particularly the subordinate ones, you're essentially betting on the company's solvency. These bonds don't directly affect equity holders because they are a separate form of investment. Subordinate debt which is common among retail investors, doesn't have any unique features compared to the type of debt like first and second liens, which do have covenants that restrict certain corporate actions like share buybacks or dividends. The interest rates for the second lien debt are typically higher due to the increased risk. Both bondholder and shareholder share a common interest. They don't want the company to go bankrupt. Dilution of the shares can occur in several scenarios, such as buying back bonds at a discount, exchanging bond financing for equity, or raising cash for working capital. Criticizing bondholders for the company's financial decisions is misplaced. They, like any other pr service provider to AMC, are utilizing the cash raised by the company. Purchasing subordinate debt influences 
the bond price to reflect the company's bankruptcy risk, indicating that the market demand for these bonds, this demand can be beneficial during negotiations, although it can be detrimental if the company plans to use all of its cash to buy back the debt. For example, AMC's 2025 bonds have a high yield to maturity at almost 24%. If AMC were to seek a bank loan, the interest rate might be around the o- or the CCC corporate OAS spread over the Federal Reserve rate of approximately 13.5, or it could be closer to 24% market rate of the bonds. As a financial commentator, I focus on AMC's bonds because of the performance is crucial for equity holders. Understanding the bond market can provide insights into the company's financial strategies and health. However, creating division amongst AMC investors is counterproductive and does not serve the company's interests. It's essentially a view both both debt and equity as part of AMC's broader financial ecosystem. I'm going to explain this in more in depth, but go ahead, Matt. Well, I want to add the opinion. You can comment. No, I want on you to add the opinion. Because I'm seeing a disconnect with the with the, the Fed and the Wall Street narrative as far as the federal interest rate. Because what happens if the Fed would drop rates as suspected for the next year, which is the narrative that they're trying to fucking portray, is a narrative where a uh, bond that's getting, say, 24% interest on it becomes offerable now at, you know, new debt at a, at a lower rate based on the Fed rate makes the bond value of the 24% lien uh, <clears throat> riskier at, 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 mm-hmm. at the at the future outlook of renegotiation or somebody else um, offering AMC a payoff value against a current lien holder that is less than the person who's holding it currently. But now, do you believe they're going to lower rates? No. I think the idea or the sentiment that they're trying to portray of a future lower rate is to create bond value at the current 10%. Right to create trade value so they can unwind themselves from the risk that they're holding against that lower rate value going forward. I'm a hundred percent agreement with you because they they can't, remember the bond market is the most important market there is. If the bond market crashes, everything is fucked. Period. End of story. There's not a more important market out there than the bond market. And the fact that they, so they collateralize have to protect, it with treasuries is fucking... Yeah. Insane. But that's where, if they go ahead and that falls, you, yeah, I mean, everything is dead. Pretty much. Yeah, everything. It doesn't matter. Hey, it's Darth. Mm-hmm. Speaking of traditional concepts of a bond, correct? In association. Yeah. Okay. All right. So at, I, I, I fail to see how it's an issue when the bond is being, it's essentially being bet with the investor because the bond is being purchased based off the investment, which is projected to upward move upward thus making the bond more valuable yes or Mm -hmm. correct all right so yeah i see no reason why there should be issue between bond and holder well like like there there shouldn't be bond and equity there there's no reason because one works off the other yet one has the ability to be more, uh, I, I, I want to choose this word carefully, maybe impactful in a short okay. term than another because bonds are so regulated and strictly adhered to that perhaps it, it, it could be a catalyst. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not saying that, but I don't see an issue where as to why 
one should be opposed to the other, especially at this position where it's at. I put a thought on that. If you, if, 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 let's say I'm a bondholder, security is a shareholder, right? And I'm collecting all that interest on the bond. The last thing I want to do is lose my cash cap. Now, how do I lose my cash cap? Well, if the equity price goes up to the point that the company can raise enough cash to outright buy my bond from me, in which they no longer need to service that debt to me, they can now service the equity. So it's in my interest to keep my bond to also use whatever influence I can have on the equity to not allow them to do a cash raise enough to cut me out of the deal. Sure, but isn't that Basically, the same it's, as, it's, as it's an entrance and exit set strategy, just with a different set of parameters? Well, it's a, it's a completely different set of parameters, considering that you're losing your cash cow. Right. Because the bondholder is getting paid, the bondholder is getting paid now. If they raise enough money to basically negate the bond, they're losing that cash cow. So you're totally taking out one set of somebody that actually is getting paid. Not to mention, if you're sitting on nor- naked shorts because you thought the company was going to dilute a shit ton of stock into the market, and they only diluted one-tenth of the value that you naked shorted, and now you depend on that bond to get an exercisable share value in order to have a, a, a collateral share issuance to wash clothes your naked shorts, and that's not happening? That leaves you fucked on your short position up. Okay, but if you're speaking specifically in bonds, are you liable or do you have to hold it for a specific amount of time to avoid the negative repercussions of your choice? Because, I mean, we're talking two, we're basically talking two different sets of parameters, two different brackets of the scene. So that debt covenant, so you're talking about the actual debt covenants. So that debt covenant is set for a certain period of time, which expires, the expiry time is based on the parameters of the actual bond. So let's But it can use... expire early if the company has the money to buy the debt. Now, Correct. So that term can be shortened, but only by the company that issued it. Correct. So when AMC, for example, is going ahead and you have these debt covenants, let's just say those are the ones that are due at the second part of this year. If that was to go ahead and they only have two options, is either pay the bond or refinance that to a later date. And those are your two options. If they pay it off, bondholder has the bag. Right, right, and and that's that was what I was trying to trying to 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 specify is that there is a specific you have to answer to your mistake or your profit when set time mm-hmm. comes when you're speaking about the bond market, not necessarily stock market. Correct. There's no quick fixes to the bond market. You either do it. Or you don't. And if you don't, you're fucked. Okay, so I, I apologize. Maybe I was going a little bit off of to ground to that. But yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. And just, you can't short, like, you can't, like, synthetically short the bond. You can't go ahead and keep a Ponzi scheme going. It, it is cut and dry, and that is it. If you don't do it, you're fucked. Plain and simple. So it basically comes to fuck you, pay me. Exactly. That's 100%. Or we break thumbs. Here's here's a hypothetical example. If retail, three million of us, each pulled $1,000, right? Three million of us into a holding company. And then we use that holding company to renegotiate a debt deal issuance with AMC where AMC would in lieu get our $300 million. We would then get a bond issuance at say a 2% cut of the current holder. And they used the 300 million we gave them to buy out the current holder of that bond, leaving them holding the bag for every 2% per billion. We'd be saving the company 20 million a year. 
and the person holding that bag would be fucked. And if we did that for all the dead, we would not only own all the float, we'd own all the debt too. And they'd Wall Street would be fucked. I I, I mean flames, new I mean nuclear holocaust, I you you there's nothing left. That's what you would be looking at. Go ahead, Darth. Yeah. And in reality, the same aspect could be done. We could Porsche this shit too. Look, the simple fact is who is going to be the single entity to absorb everything? And especially if it's not retail, who's going to be the one to singly own that enough shares to say, okay, fuck everything else. I want the share count. I want this. I want this. I want this. Because that's what happened with Porsche. But it was done very yep. differently, and and it was done uniquely, and it was done, keep this in mind, under one specific entity. And that is what made that squeeze happen. I, I, I can it was very break strategic. it down to you, to anyone who has any questions about the Porsche Volkswagen squeeze. I can break it down to you month by month, day by day, week by week, exactly what happened. And explain to you why it happened. What happened was a company came in, purchased the company, directly registered shares over. under one specific one specific company's name. It was called Porsche. Registered seventy four percent of Volkswagen shares. And that's what caused the Volkswagen squeeze. So when you start talking about things like this, you need to really start to look into the depth of what causes these things in the background and the amount of owning and proving majority share ownership and what it actually takes to produce that. And as a retail investor, or even somebody who's who's a multimillionaire and a company owner, what it takes to go into a company to do a hostile takeover, some company that doesn't want you to own you, and see how that plays out. It's years and years and years of legal battles and proof and documentation, halts, stops. I Can mean, I give you an example of hot. one that's playing out now, and I don't know what the result of that will be because I don't know what the exposure is, but I'm sure it's pretty high. But DWAC as a holding company merging with Truth Social to make Truth Social uh, a tradable company. On the market, huge is huge, and it, and it, and I mean, when you talk about equity value being infused into Trump's pocket as owner of True Social, um, as a fungible asset value, it is huge. four billion. Yeah, so four that's billion. Just one because they pulled it out of it Wall is. Street's hands. Um, right. They say, "Fuck you, yeah. pay me. This is mine. I own it." You guys fucked around. Now you're going to find out. And that's what it. I, I honestly believe after years and years and years, company after company after company, that that's what it's going to finally take is these companies stepping up and saying, fuck you, pay me. No, we're done. We, we're done with your bullshit. We're done with your nonsense. We're done with your people who claim that they're regulating us and they're not. They're not. They're, they're, no. they're paid scumbags who look the other way. Oh, look, we find such and such 1.2% of their six-month income. Oh, look, pat us on the back. No. No. It's over and done with. Like, And this is the shit that really bugs me when I see stuff and people getting attacked online. <clears throat> like, it's not about a specific stock. It's about educating everybody as to what's going on in the stock market. This is how the 1% stay the 1% because they have the ability to make these little, oh, I'm just going to push this button and this will change. I'm just going to do this and that will change. Well, I'm going to invest in this so this will change. I'll make money here so everything's cool. Bidenomics, any bullshit you want, all the Trump nonsense, whatever it is, it all plays back into making somebody rich other than you. And as soon as you realize that, that's where your power comes from. Like, just, just 
if you're spending money on shit, that's what you should be investing in, not financial advice, but stop chasing dreams of somebody else's nonsense that you're going to pay them for. Look up above, Darth. This is, and the moose, thank you. This is actually a perfect example of what Darth was just talking about. Perfect example. Uh, why, why bother? Why are you going? I mean, they're not doing anything. They're they're trying to protect. This is them building their wall. The ones that and you don't have for a, the doors faster than a fucking dipshit pull mm -hmm. on that the exit though. <laughs> Correct, and and that's the thing. And the and this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain a little bit more because I I want you guys to understand bonds, and I want you guys to actually understand why they are important what's the the correlation between stock market and bonds so esteemed attendees gather around the amc ape cage and myself proudly present an enlightening exploration into the financial dynamics of amc's entertainment holdings today we embark on a captivating journey through the complex interplay of bonds and stocks unraveling the thread that we weave together the fabric of corporate finance. Join us as we discuss the alchemy, alchemical uh, processes that transmute the essence of debt instruments into the lifeblood of equity, all while maintaining the pulse of the company's uh, vitality. Prepare to be immersed in a world where numbers tell tales of triumph and tribulation and where wisdom of investment shapes the future of entertainment. Welcome to a masterclass in the art of financial finesse. Buying AMC bonds. Imagine you're at an auction and you purchase a bond from AMC. This bond is a promise from AMC that will not only return your money, but also pay you interest. Subordinate bonds are like the seats at the back of the theater. They're the last to be paid if things go south. Buying these doesn't shake a stockholder's world directly, but it's a silent nod to your belief in AMC's resilience. Subordinate debt. These bonds are the understudies in our play. They don't get the limelight like the main actors. First, and second lien debts, which come with the strings attached, like no share buybacks or dividends. And just like the high risk stunt, second lien debts demand a higher reward for the leap of faith. Dilution. In our theater, dilution is akin to adding more seats. It can happen when AMC buys back bonds at a bargain or swaps debt for the stake of the company, or raises cash like a fundraising gala. More seats means each ticket, each share, holds a little less clout. The impact of equity holders. When you buy subordinate debt, you are rooting for the same end game as the stockholders, a standing ovation for AMC, not a curtain fall. The price of these bonds is a barometer of AMC's financial forecast, hinting at whether investors expect clear skies or stormy weather. Interest rates. Consider AMC's 2025 bonds with a yield to maturity at, of almost 24%. It's like a critic review predicting the show's success. If AMC were to knock on a bank's door for a loan, would the bank offer the standard rate for risky ventures or would they share, or charge based on the critics' harsh predictions? The company's credit worthiness and the economic climate set the stage for this negotiation. Investor unity. Dividing the audience, investors serve no one. Whether you hold a bond or a stock, understanding the bond market's ebbs and flows helps you foresee how the story might unfold. 
distinguished guests, as we continue our explanation into the financial tapestry of AMC, we transition to a pivotal act in our narrative. This segment will illuminate, illuminate the subtle yet profound interplay between the company's bonds and, stock, and its stocks, and relationship that underpins the very essence of corporate finance. Bond demand and investor confidence. When investors show bullish demand for AMC's bonds, it's akin to a round of applause for the company's performance. It signals confidence in AMC's ability to fulfill its debt obligations. Yet the motive behind such investments are pivotal. Each investor plays a unique role with strategies and expectations that can sway the market storyline. AMC's rights as a bond issuer. AMC holds the script when it comes to the bonds. The bonds, the bond covenants are like a director's note outlining what AMC can do. They can pay off the debt at a premium plus interest as per the current terms. Go ahead, Matt. So I want to use your seat reference as far as theaters and bonds. So as they pay off bonds and there's less outstanding, they become more value as supply and demand changes metrics of the market. So when Soika talks about the amount of money that we're spending supporting the company through seeing movies, buying merchants and buying their asset uh, issue, issued products, right? Um, we create net positive which is then liquidable assets. And, and, but what bonds do is they don't want to share them assets with the, with the stock equity class or retail. They want to eat up all them profits through bond servicing so as to collect all of that. So all that gross that we're making isn't going to bottom line net because of the service cost that they're collecting against that. Hold on one second. That deserves this. A hundred percent correct. A hundred percent correct. Now, if we you can need get enough to, to allow them to pay down the bond, there'll be more value in the bonds for the fewer share of institutions that own them, but it also allows them to compound paying off that debt, shortening the bond supply, creating more net equity that can reach the, the class A shareholder through buybacks and dividend payments. Because once you cover all them covenants, it frees you up to reward shareholders. Man, you're just you're just on a roll. I mean, Leo, I think you need to throw up some some choo choos. No, my leader's busy. Here you go. Yeah, you deserve the choo choos for riding that gravy train. Uh, pay off the debt at a premium plus interest as per current terms. Renegotiate the debt terms potentially securing discounts or extended timelines with interest parties or a combination of both, adjusting the financial plot to their favor. All right, come on, hurry up, Brian. I don't want to miss the movie trivia slides before the movie. Peter, those questions are the easiest, most pandering things in the world. This Oscar won an Oscar for the portrayal oh, of Forrest Oh, Tim Gump. Honks, Tim Honks, Forrest Gump, I win. Oh? Ah, good, it's starting. Yeah, that's what you say. I can never figure out when the hell the studio logos end and the actual movie begins. All right, let's see what you got, Fox. Oh, I bet that's a sea monster. Oh, that's not the movie. That's, yeah, I think I heard of him. Here we go, movie! Well, now that seems intentionally misleading. <laughs> All right, someone's coming to town. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, all right, period movie. Oh, not a period movie. <laughs> oh, this guy's in trouble. Can't wait to hear his story. 
Oh, come on! It's all the production studios. So, uh, the role of debt holders. Bondholders are the critics in the audience. They can trade and sell the bonds based on market value, which reflects the perceived risk and the bond's terms. Dilution effect on the plot. Future dilution converting debt to equity is like the twist in the tale, dependent on various factors such as AMC's financial health and the prevailing market conditions. The potential dilution is often anticipated by investors and factored into the stock price. Short selling and speculation. Short selling in anticipation of future dilution is a gamble, much like betting on the outcome of a cliffhanger. Market participants may hold differing opinions on the likelihood and impact of such dilution. Raising cash to avoid dilution. AMC might aim to raise enough cash to pay off bonds akin to securing funding for a sequel to avoid dilution. This move can strengthen the company's balance sheet and align with long-term shareholder interests. Market perception and interpretation. The financial markets are a complex theater where information can be interpreted through various lenses. Some narratives may carry, may carry a spin, emphasizing the need for a critical analysis of data and considerations of diverse perspectives. The interest rate and financial negotiations. This is an example. Consider AMC's 2025 bonds with a yield to maturity of almost 24%. If AMC were seeking a loan, would a bank offer a rate based on the standard of for high risk ventures or higher rate implied by the bonds. The company credit rating and the economic environment are the backdrop for this financial dialogue. Go ahead, Matt. A better example, which isn't a bond example, but a dilution example would be Antara and A. So let me explain this. AMC had Saudi debt bonds that were coming due that at expiration could have exercised their right to dilute the stock by far more than the dilution that was created through AMC to do a cash raise to service that debt that was outstanding. Only Antara manipulated that debt value that they could raise by creating a higher share yield by shorting the APE equity for two months before the realized price target at which AMC would raise capital, giving them a larger share value against the cash raised, only then to create a future profit value against that subdued pricing to close out their shorts. Explain that easier. So AMC needed to raise cash in order to service the debt. If they didn't service the debt, they would have been in breach of contract on their Saudi debts. So they didn't have a choice but to raise cash. You cannot, maybe not like how he did it, how he went about it, but he did not want to put the company's fate in retail's hands. I don't blame him. Most people don't understand the intricacies. So he did what he had to do to create a dilutive equity in order to raise the cash necessary to service debt against his locked up cash that he couldn't use to service that debt it would have been in breach of contract to fall below a certain um cash holding liquidable amount that's required as an insurance against the debt contracts so he raised cash by working a deal with antera to issue them a equity antera knowing that they were working on a deal, shorted the ape equity down to 66 cents, which meant whatever cash raise would have been at, say, $1.20, right, would have been less shares than the shares they received at 66 cents, creating a bottom short value gain against the future shares that AMC was going to issue them, which is why it jumped up to $2.00 after they got the shares closed out their shorts took their profit rolled them into options there you go 
Now, if so, they hadn't raised that cash, they could have. They would have been forced to renegotiate debt terms because they would have been in breach of contract, which probably would have came along with the higher interest cost, and or would have allowed the Saudi debt holders to exercise their right to deduct far more than the paper equity. You're kind of gargling marbles there, buddy. If they hadn't raised that cash and would have been in breach of their debt covenant, they would have had to renegotiate their debt covenant on the Saudi bonds at a higher interest rate, or the debt Saudi bondholders could have exercised their right to dilute the shareholder by far more than the value that AMC sold to Interra. Yes, you're correct. Investor unity and market dynamics. Dividing the investor audience is counterproductive. Understanding the bond market movements is crucial for predicting the unfolding story, whether you're holding a bond or a stock. So as we draw to the curtains of this exploration of AMC's financial stage, let us reflect on the journey that we've embarked upon. The markets, a grand theater of dreams and dramas, have shown us that the roles of debt and equities are as intertwined as the st stands or strands of destiny. Each decision, each investment is a brushstroke on a canvas of AMC's future. In the end, it is not the years of your life that count, it's the life in your years. This quote resonates with the spirit of AMC investors who infuse life into their investments, believing in the potential of every moment. The stock market is filled with indiv individuals who know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Philip Fisher, as AMC investors, you recognize the value beyond the price the story beyond the stock ticker, and the community beyond the individual. Remember, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is to courage, it, ah, it is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill, the path of AMC, much like the journey of investing, is marked by the courage and the conviction and the resilience to persevere. Let these words inspire you, for you are not merely spectators in this financial saga, but active participants shaping the narrative. Your belief in AMC is a testament to the collective powers of investors to champions, a company they hold dear. In the grand uh, tapestry of the financial markets, your role is pivotal, your voice is powerful, and your actions are impactful. May your investments in AMC be as rewarding as the films that grace the screen, its screens, and may your journey be as thrilling as the stories they tell. Thank you for being part of this insightful voyage through the world of finance and may the credits roll on the prosperous, uh, prosperous future for you all. And now I open up the floor. Let the floodgates roll. So I hope you learned about your bonds. I hope you learned why this all matters. Everything is interconnected. It is a huge fucking spider web. That spider web goes from here on all the way to Japan, all the way across the world. Let's go around. Everything impacts something. There's nothing that doesn't do anything for anybody. Everything counts. And whether it's your bond market, your stock market, your commercial real estate market, your residential real estate market, your credit cards, your banks, everything, it's all connected together. And it's all connected together by Fed liquidity. Exactly. 
so now when you cycle through this journey that we're all witnessing and all playing a part in, it is everything around you that is going to make you win. My leader, Leo. I have a question about the spider web. Go ahead. Uh, it's you not say it's from connected. My sense. It's connected to everything, right? Yeah. Uh, from Japan to everything else. Yes. Is it also connected to the multiverse? Yes. Well, then it makes sense. It's connected to the multiverse. It's connected to Web your spider sense. Is it tingling? Web 3D. Yeah. Your crypto markets, everything. It's all. I'm this space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. You could have just said that at the beginning of the space call and like everybody would have figured it out then. Well, I, oh, well, thank you. Do you want me to make a short, shorter space call then? I just want you to draw a picture for me now at this point to connect it all, connect all the dots. I'll let, with, I'll, with you know, Matt bet. is really good at doing, doing what? the Let me ask you this. Parts. What color is the web? Um, Red. That's right. red. That's, that's, that, you know what? That's literally the color in my mind. It's a red web. Melvin's a red grain of sand. Huge. <laughs> But it all means something, all of it. And I would rather. I mean, when you really think about it, like you know, I'm joking, I'm teasing a little bit here, but like when you think about it, the multiverse, like all the other markets too, it's all fucking connected. You're right. You're actually right. The fucking multiverse, it's all connected. It's one big fucking web, and uh, it's a big nasty, nasty web. It the is. web so intricate, it, only AI can't even figure it out. Hmm. Mm hmm. Is there a dark web? There sure is. Mm. And there's also a black market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the shadow of the web on the ground as light exposes the intricacies of that web. I really, uh, the, mo the most important thing is just so you guys have a true understanding because a lot of things can be interpreted in a way that they shouldn't. And as much as I do, I do like markets with me to a certain extent, but when it comes to the actual finer details of certain things, it is totally negated and it's never, it never actually accentuates a point. And, all right, it's, so I, I learn a lot from her. She has vast knowledges and in her defense, in short little tweet threads or whatever you can't you can't get into the details of all the cause and effects of but what she chooses to shed light on while ignoring some of the other things that are just as important to the the what what in my opinion creates a false narrative of even though there's truth in it it's what she's not saying that drives me crazy. Guys, she's yeah. she is an she has an expertise of being an analyst in these fraud banks. That's why there's a narrative involved in this. It's okay. And like, there's a certain arrogance that comes with it that drives me insane. Too. It's all it's all with intent. Look at the people that have not. They were in the dark, guys. The shows, they were in the dark since 2023. She posted that tweet, and all of a sudden, they started tweeting on her. This is the same. Goldman, yeah, a lot of those people I had Goldman blocked. Ball I thought that was really interesting. Spoofing AMC for 150 days, quite the time that this Randall fraud shill has been dark on AMC, and a lot of these people who went. Who, who said they're not talking about AMC anymore? They come up on the surface. <laughs> look, they're coming back into the light. Look who! Yeah. Interesting weekend. By the way, the, the <laughs> that guy, that Tony De Niro guy, that has literally said he was done with AMC, did a live, you mean did a YouTube live with her seventeen hours ago, the same time that posted she posted with the bonds, and they were talking about the bonds. They're literally, literally trying to mislead people. 
it's the same. And that's why that's why we did this is because I need you have to shed a light onto it. You can't sit here and say, "Hey, this," but you're you're negating an, an entire other half. I can tell you right now that I was a little hesitant, but at the same time, fuck it. But we are gonna get a lot of fucking fire back for this space call from certain. Oh yeah, and and fuck it. I mean, it is what it is. Come at me, dude. The, the dude, it's, yeah, it's the, the Rico is obvious. The, the, guys, if you don't think this is Rico, it's this is literally Rico to manipulate the sentiment of a stock. It's clear as day. There's a network of them. You don't just come out yeah. of the woodwork and all of a sudden you're bound to these kind of people who have this knowledge and financial advisory with previous banks as you work for them. And all of a sudden you come up and then they're magnetized to your posts. Sorry, that doesn't happen unless you're part of this network. And what are they using? WhatsApp to communicate? It's just <laughs> signal? What? What are they using? Ed, we did the background. We did the background work on the De Niro. Yeah, the guy's the, the guy's <laughs> the biggest actor, the biggest fraud actor yeah. on this entire scene. It's it's I disgusting. Mean, uh, we were we were doing this for I mean, no joke. It was like four and a half hours and just going through the entire history of him, which I'm not going to portray right now. But regardless, this I don't. All of that is just in this confirmation that we have right now for what we just went through just shows true colors to me. It absolutely does in every sense of the word of he's not he's not for us. I'm sorry. He's just not. Well, he, dude, he was the one that was involved in bashing. If you <laughs> all those mm-hmm. people that he was with and connected through. <laughs> I mean, you go to out from Boston, to all these shells. Hey, they're all interconnected oh, yeah. with Eaton. All of them. All, all these, dude. It's they all bashed Adam. They all bashed Ape. They all bashed AMC. All of them participated in fraud. All of them did this, and they're yeah. still doing it. Oh, I know. I know. Were, we did the work. They were purposely creating volatility for their swing trades. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Rob, you're back. Are you done giving your lecture? <laughs> yeah, I got I got shorted by the way, so watch out. Oh. Okay, well, that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Your your you know your lectures. I have a very strong point. <laughs> Sorry, I've been quiet for the for the remainder of the time. I <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, but that that's where <laughs> I was curious what your thoughts were. I mean, bonds are needed uh, to some capacity, but like a uh, man and everybody have said. If you're buying second lien subordinate notes, or if you're getting into more of a retail based, uh, it's fine that you're you're applying more liquidity to them, but it doesn't help you at the end of the day. It's it's all a it's all for the benefit of uh, the person that's laying that on top of you for uh, those notes. All right, so let me get a few points out because debt is necessary. You want to talk about necessary debt? AMC in 2020 wouldn't exist if it wasn't for them bonds and that ability to raise that cash to get through that. Now, did they expect them to survive even with that? Absolutely fucking not. That's why they shorted the shit out of it while they were giving them money to have lien rights against a short position as a hedge. Plus, they were probably insuring them one in order to make cash on the failure of that warrant value that would have exceeded their loss on the warrant. Right? So... When you when companies take on debt, it is necessary in order to grow the company's asset value through business expenditures, right? So AMC, even though a lot of its debt that was taken on in 2020 was zero expenditure value for future realized nets, it got them at a cost to survive a situation of zero revenue. So next is next to zero revenue, right? So now yeah. as they're paying that off, don't get it confused. They are they do have a rotating cash um, debt value that they can access in order to facilitate things like 
branding their own popcorn in retail, branding their own chocolate, uh, A-list. All these expenditures are a result of debt that they wouldn't otherwise have access to cash to do these things. Now, the forward look on that debt is, is capital um, capital expedited percent gain up. So if they're creating more profit than the interest cost of the debt on the money from that debt to create net, then it's good debt. Unfortunately, yes, they are using good debt to create future capital expenditure profits, but they still have that zero expended capital that's not creating future revenue, but got them through that time. Now, did they pay a lot of that off? Yes, thanks to us, at the expense of our share. But that wasn't an fault. And I honestly think it was created on purpose in order to capitalize on a situation that was out of their hands. They had to capitalize on it. They had to do that. Right. It, it was essential to them or else they would be dead now. Exactly. So, yes, there's good debt, there's bad debt. Bad debt was 2020, but essential debt is more important than bad debt if you want to exist. <laughs> Correct. And they're painting the picture like the, there's bad debt all over AMC when there's there's been companies that have huge amounts of debt loads that – they're, you know, they don't pay attention to that aspect. They only pay attention to the nine billion that we have, and they're not paying attention to the to the point at which our revenues are increasing. Our outlook is looking better and better going forward, and the fact that at some point they will never no no longer have that toxic debt, which will free up future revenue growth debt. You know, once they can get out of that out of that toxic debt situation which they have been for two years at you know at, at at certain expenses but at the same time not to the expense of their narrative of letting shorts off the hook they're not even close to diluting a share value to which is the likes of their exposure value on a hundred percent across the board unreported collateralized you know, the realization in 2021 of just how deep they were short in AMC's float is the reason that they are throwing everything at the fucking wall for the last three years to not have to realize that lost bet. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And that 2026 debt of that whatever 600 million is left over in that second lien, that's gonna be gone by the time we even even start even talking about it in the future here. And guys, that's why you're seeing Krabby Patty losing it. Yeah, yeah. Add to that mm -hmm. all the fucking consolidated bond maturities on the treasury notes and the, and the treasury bonds that come due in 25 is gonna eat up liquidity so fucking fast at a time when we're you know just hitting our stride in, in, in gross slash net value that don't be able to fucking renegotiate anything left at that point to such they such won't have to sitting on now I mean, but they, they won't have to. to no well they, they, they could because any that, but the rate will be so much better I mean you're talking 24% <laughs> yeah you cut that in half Hey, uh, right. James. Like I said, what does what does AMC's annual balance sheet look like when they're saving eight hundred million dollars a year in interest debt service, and you're adding that exactly to that bottom? So you're adding I, that to their bottom line. So Go ahead, I, Ed. I pinned to the top. Uh, it, it's uh, everyone needs to rewatch and uh, watch and watch iRobot ASAP. There's a lot that goes on with the algorithms, like trading logic. There's like one to one for movie stuff. Anyways, on the third in the third image that I that I provided in that post, it shows the um in from twenty I, I don't I forget what the date was no twenty nineteen, it shows the internalizers, the two largest, 
Citadel Securities, and Virtu. Then it goes G1, Two Sigma, Wolverine, Jane Street, UBS, Goldman Sachs, by the way, whatever. Not look counting at the, the crypto. Look expert. at the internalization between those two. It's like 50% of all things. And that's not including off ex- that's like not even including the ATS, off exchange, dark pool, all this other crap. The mirror These token. two are criminal partners. Like it's it's freaking obvious. Matt, what were you saying? Not counting the mirror tokens and Coinbase and Yeah, we're not even counting that. We're not even counting counting tokenization swaps. <laughs> the rehypothecation through the crypto fucking economy that's not returned. Right. Right. That's yet to unwind compounds the exposure. Digital assets locates, borrows, nets, all this all this toxic garbage. Why does nobody mention the debt the citadel owes? Oh, they don't want to mention that. But yeah, let's focus on AMC's debt. Let's focus on Citadel. How about Citadel making up all these LLCs and then just transferring the sole not yet purchased shares into those LLCs to show that they have collateral and uh, can continue to lend? How about that? What do you think the multiplier is of exposure through unreported unknown offshore values of? Um, I, I don't know, 50, 100 times. I would assume it's astronomical. Chaotic's got to hand it. Go ahead. Go on, go Hey, on. guys. How are y'all? Y'all can't complain. Oh, my goodness. So since we're talking about Citadel and Akamai, since we're talking about these two motherfuckers... So the relationship that Citadel has with Akamai is one of the very reasons why I've been so concerned about uh, blackouts happening when things get too out of hand, when we get to that point. And it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You know, when we get into a crash scenario, you know, we've seen it more and more over the years. Well, they'll like fake an outage. Uh, in the the episode four that I made called Blackout was basically just like describing all of the different times where uh, like critical infrastructure has gone offline. And one of those times, it, and I have it in the in the nest right now. Uh, I put the timestamp for when the Akamai. I, I specifically use the Akamai blackout for a reason because Akamai uh, is able to blackout uh, online banking. What good is a squeeze if you can't get what you want? It's not enough to just get to the squeeze. You have to be able to get your money out fast before they start blacking everything out because they're going to be worried about bank runs. I'll be sitting there in front of my broker, uh, right across from his desk and saying, you know what, fucker? I'm going to tell you when to sell. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? These are the things that I think about. These are the types of things that keep me up at night. You know what I mean? You have- to me, it's not it's not a matter of whether or not they're fucked because we know Sir, this would are. be a good time if you have that recording of um, the big short when he says, no, we're not selling. We're going to make them bleed. Only I tell you when to sell. And now it's not. Be right back. Be right back. And it's, uh, you know, it's really concerned. But the, the specific Akamai blackout that I used for as an example happened during the less often mentioned August 2021 run up of AMC. People forget, you know, we always talk about January, February, and we always talk about June. But we never talked about August of 2021, where it oh, did we almost did. go off uh, the we rails. T- we talked about because that's when the BDRs were enacted. That's the A2MC34 BDRs that were uh, introduced during the blackout. Yeah, they were created by. City. Yeah, yep. but Akamai blacked out, you know, half of electronic banking. You know, a lot of us were offline, but Charles Schwab was affected by the Akamai blackout, and I know that we're really. Heavily looking at to what Charles Schwab has going on lately, especially. You mean Klaus? <laughs> Klaus? I am Klaus. <laughs> well, no, I really do. I, I am do Klaus. That when it comes down to it, to protect themselves and they'll claim it's for the greater good, they'll black all this shit out and say the apes are out of control. 
I don't think they could do that. Uh, re realistically, that's like sending an EMP. It's like basically the same thing, but you're not going to get, if they block that all out, if they were, there's no sells, there's no buys. They can't cover. If they take away the buy button, you know what I mean? They've already started, Schwab was uh, taking away the buy button for uh, unsettled but they can't. and I guess uh, margins. You can't but close I'm saying that if you take away the buy button. Yeah, if they take away the buy button this time, they can't cover because there's no cells that can actually go ahead and actually be washed and rinsed for that to happen. So you don't have to worry about the buy button, you know, going away or the sell the button. Perfect example of at that this point. is June happened because January didn't allow anything to happen when they did that. I'm saying there's precedent. Yeah. There's precedent. In a 1929 style crash situation, there's a precedent, and it's called a banking holiday. And it happened in 1933, where they shut down. And this is the images that we see from the Great Depression that are the most recognizable. The reason why Grandma stuffs money in her mattress as she's going into, you know, forgets where it is as she's going senile. Mm -hmm. The banking holidays were when they completely shut down all of the banks when they should have been open and said, this is for the greater good. It's to stop bank runs. Now, right, but the thing is, the exposure didn't change as a result of that. Only the sentiment of retail and the banks, based on a false narrative, that they were going to back crutch the banks and open them back up as they created a false sentiment that the bank was fine. The banks were never more or less exposed than they were before the holiday. Correct. I'm not saying it and for now, that reason. I'm saying that in 1933, it included physical banks, like people going into the banks because that's how his, you know, people transacted with, with banks in that day. If they were to do that now in 2024, it would include online banking. But the online banking, so it, it, that's all intertwined, like we're stating. is So, like, if they were to go ahead and close that and basically you're not able to buy and sell, that means they're not able to go ahead and actually wash, rinse their shorts. And they can't close out because no one's selling. Right, you, and if the market you take is retail going to out of the, the equation, where... there's no naked longs being sold for them to unwind their naked short collateral value of. So to right. cut retail out of the trade prospect doesn't allow them to unwind anything. That's the only problem. I don't think they want to genuinely unwind anything is the thing. I think they are hoping that in such an unimagin unimaginable amount of chaos, that they'll find a way to shuffle it and, and not deal with it. Yeah, but then they're fair. still on the hold for their equity. Is the, the all the money that they have put into this, everything that they've done, has no repercussion or no unwinding. It, there, there's money that's sitting in there that has to be distributed some way or another. Regardless, I don't think because retail it's up cares. The whole financial system. I don't think retail cares what they want. It has nothing to do with what they want or what they don't. But I mean, they have every ability to pull the plug. If they think things are getting out of control, and I mean, they've shown that they'll they're willing to do things that later on get them sued. They don't care. I I don't think you're gonna see it, but that if they were to do it to that extreme this time around at this juncture, where everybody in the financial climate is basically wondering what the fuck you're doing, why are you spending this? Why are you doing this with our money? Why is this being sent to a proxy war, the whole nine? Do you think that there wouldn't be any type of revolution? There would be. I'm I not do. saying there's not going to be. I'm saying It'll be that's the largest what I'm revolution ever. Yeah. You're talking about, you're you're talking about they will be no longer in power, no matter what. There is no, there is no. no side of thing where they actually come on top. There is no there is no result from either direction it's 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 either I mean, they're they get, looking at they get wiped out through 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 a moas or they get wiped out through a revolution and either way we it, we still come out on top it doesn't matter what they do the only they way they have to get out of this is a bailout not to institutions direct to retail or correct. and correct. get and pay us that's that's, that's the only way
or a transfer of all these wealthy motherfuckers' account values to retail for their shares, which I don't think I, they're I, interested in doing. No, and I also think that the, regardless, yes, the bailout is, but the bailout is also their way of trying to kick said can down a road if they possibly can. The problem is, is that this is going to be at the extent of the non-knowing group, meaning the people that have pensions, 401ks, IRAs, that aren't knowledgeable, that aren't invested or hedged for what is about what to you're happen. You're talking about I do them? See can't. Didn't exactly oh, work second. out for them in the second half of 22. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, it didn't work out for them at all. But I do understand where chaotic is coming from, because why would you have uh, why would you have all these migrants that are going ahead and being able to sign up for the service? They don't have they don't live with the people. These are people that don't give a flying fuck about Americans in any which way, and this is where the government starts to basically cycle out the people that live amongst the people in the armed services because they would never go against them to here's your militia. And I understand it from that side of it, but that would be the only way for a revolutionary point of view, if that makes sense. Which I do understand, but here's a clip. Thanks for coming so quickly, Mark. Yeah. Um, I know you've been hearing rumblings about some losses Morgan has suffered. Congratulations. On what? Oh, <laughs> thanks. Um, Having fun? Yes. <laughs> Tons. Um, I just wanted you to know that, um, that, yes, Morgan has suffered some losses, but our liquidity is strong and there is no cause for concern. Would Benny Klieger be concerned? Because word on the street is that he took some pretty heavy losses. Kathy, come on. We know each other. What's going on? How 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 bad is this? Okay. Two years ago, Benny Klieger and Morgan's bond department also started shorting subprime housing, two billion in triple B's. Benny is smarter than I thought. No, he's not smart at all. The premiums on the swap ate into his desk's profit. To cover his triple B shorts, he sold a lot of A and double A swaps as protection, a lot. He believed that there was no way that they could be affected. Tell me Morgan Stanley doesn't hold the contracts on these swaps. J James, James, by the way, guess who worked for Morgan Stanley? I've been trying to figure out. Who? Oh. <laughs> May. <laughs> Markets. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Good old markets with me. How how comical is that? Back to the clip. Who I'm betting against? And it's Morgan Stanley. Which is me. What's your exposure? Three billion? Please don't tell me it's more than four. I can't answer that. I can't. Yes, you can answer that because I walk in here and people are crying in your hallway. Kathy. You bring me in to tell me everything's fine and everything's not fine. What What is happening? The long exposure is 15 billion. Blech. She just kept saying the fault over 8% were impossible. Oh my that God. That there would be a million homeless. Oh. Yeah, but we have nothing to do with Morgan Stanley. Yeah. Tell the bankruptcy court. Morgan fails. All our accounts go on their balance sheet. It's just crazy. Morgan's makes the suffers bed and we pay their fucking gambling debt. Short the bank stocks. Wait. Or we sell our swaps when the market opens. Very important point that was stated right there. Where he said short the banks. Why do you think the government is trying to enact laws that restrict you from shorting the bank stocks? Just think about that. Because that's the equity collateral. We get our bonuses, our investors get their profits. We get 30 cents on the dollar. Not bad. 
We're three times that. Not if there's no market left to sell them in. We got it. We're not giving out any life hooks. Mark, if Morgan goes under, we end up with nothing. Vinny. Jesus, come on. I say when we sell. Look, I get that this is personal for you, but we have a fiduciary responsibility. No, no, we don't. Respons Nobody's acting responsible. Fuck responsibility. Are you kidding me? The apples at the big bank. I want to take. You always want me apples. We're talking, please. Excuse us. We're going to wait, and we are going to wait, and we are going to wait until they feel the pain, until they start to bleed. That is what I want. Mom, but what about our clients who've entrusted us with their savings? I say when we sell. Out. This isn't about you. This isn't about you. Hey, up hey, the side, hey, hey, I Don't say when we sell. Whatever you say, Mark. The important part to all of that is because, one, if you short the banks, you're just you're instigating a bank run. You you are literally just opening the doors and saying, "Ole, here you go." And this is to come to fruition way faster. That's why your government is going ahead and basically saying you cannot short bank stocks. You can't do it. Mm -mm -mm. Consumer you do that. Evidence of deposit in a bank is a direct reflection of share value. Who, who do Correct. you guys think has been? Selling off these regional banks. <laughs> the government can. The government can. And and, and just to <laughs> add, just to add gasoline to the fire, this is literally. Well. I kid you not. What you, James? What you just kind of showed with the whole, uh, with, with this, with this clip. This is like this uh, is literally what it probably sounds like in the back rooms. Just add ten more decibels of volume to that. This is probably what happens in their back rooms. They don't know how to how to fix this because they can't. They got themselves in no. a deep asshole, and it's over. This is, this is the problem because now you're literally seeing a string of different ways to go ahead and manipulate a ticker. Like you have the ping pong aspect. You have the sold uh, or so or eh, longs marked as shorts, shorts marked as long, married to divorce puts. You have the option chains fuck up. You have everything that you could possibly imagine. Everything's on. Everything's on crack. It literally everything's hit, piece, hit pieces. Hit pieces. You have they're coming out like hot cakes. I mean, literally for, the biggest right difference. Off the, press. the biggest difference is is that was bank to bank exposure. This is yes. the everything exposure. It's not just banks this time. It's global. Yep. yep. So now you're in a position where you're basically watching this. And why I keep on telling you all that take a number, write it down, whatever number you please, it, dude, it, you will get it. This will bleed Citadel dry. <laughs> this will bleed. The, this will bleed the entire world economy dry. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that the reason why it's Citadel because it's always lead all these doors, all these ways they lead back to Citadel and Blackrock. It's always them. Too. Oh yeah, they do. They do. But this is still at the extent of the whole world economy. Now, re remember, the drawback in all of this, people are going to lose their homes. People are going to lose their pensions. People are going to lose their 401ks. Everybody that you know that has this great investment strategy or this great savings strategy, it's all going to get taken all right, from Correction, them. pensions and 401ks and such are only going to lose to the extent of the time that they have to re-realize their Thank values you. against that. Second, this is different than 2008 in that on a loss value of a balloon contract as a loss Which are, they're all balloons. can only lose 100%. This is the opposite in that the exposure loss against a short can be infinite. So when he was saying 
only I say when to close this position. It had to be timed to the point at which prior to the Fed creating the liquidity value to back the banks, which would have pushed the price share back up against their ability to close out and maximize their gains on. Now, in this situation where they have infinite losses, there is no point in time at which there is going to be a reversal of value against short losses. The other thing, too, is that those are not realized <laughs> until the very end. None of it. And, they have and no idea. The more they try to unwind, the more their losses compound. Yeah. It's unrealized until they're gone. Until they're able to actually close their position, their unrealized gains, they're not they don't know until they're officially out of the play. And I don't think even a hundred percent loss on their fucking magnificent sevens is even close to enough to cover not even close. Just so it, it, imagine to all that there. going to imagine all that <laughs> coupling back into AMC. <laughs> oh my god. Oh uh, no. Like, <laughs> you are you are looking at the biggest shitstorm to face the financial market ever. You have to realize that this is two decades of short exposure coming to a head. You know, that tweet makes a lot of sense now. With Gasparino, the world is falling apart because people are buying games. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's it's probably funny because secret. it's actually That's true. That's the puzzle in plain sight. That probably is the puzzle in plain sight. It's that breadcrumb. He dropped the breadcrumb that people didn't even notice. Yeah. He, yeah. Or, uh, he, or that The world is falling apart. <laughs> Kabalam. Oh. What are you saying, Matt? Or that messed up commercial they put out after the June. <laughs> That too. Well, all those, all those, pe all those people that work at these, you know, fraud companies that come from SEC, they're not gonna have a, <laughs> they're not gonna have a, a retirement. <laughs> they didn't. Do None of them are. Oh man. They... But if you, but you remember, but th I, I want you to think about this. Is yes, checkmate is a great point. Thank you, my leader. But the one. Think about this. The actual exposure that all of these hedge funds, you know, the market makers and all that, and how the interconnectivity between your pensions, your 401ks, these IRAs. I, I really want you to think about that because honestly, that is literally, it, it, they've been playing wild with those accounts. I mean, it, it, what was it? It was Vanguard. It, didn't Vanguard just do a thing with the pensions and now they're 100% utilization on AMC? Yep. See, here's the other thing. So when I brought up about pensions and people in their pensions that are that are, have time left to, to re-realize gain value and asset class of their pension values going forward is also not reflective of the cost of pensions at the current moment and their ability to pay retirees their pension check values of of retirement cost monthly payments so there's a balance between money income from current pensions to retired pensions and a cost value of You're 100% correct. No, I understand that point, but still, these are all connected regardless. And there's, as Mark Baum clearly said, responsible. Who the fuck is being responsible? Because these are a way for them to show liquidity, collateral, and that's why they're using it.
they are using everything in their arsenal to go ahead and stop what is happening, about to happen to them now. It, and a last ditch effort. It, it's like the Robin Vill- Will, uh, Robin Williams thing. It's like, can I just borrow you know two two billion you know this week? You know, it's it's gonna be different. <laughs> It's gonna be different. Yeah, it's gonna be different. I swear to God, I'm gonna change. Uh, another, don't worry about another it. Another point I want to bring up from that clip is his worst imaginable situation that he could derive in his mind of a worst possible situation that they were short or that they were exposed was four or five billion. Tell me it's not four or five billion, and the number was fifteen. 3x is worst imaginable. Throw it out there, number. This is. I'm going to play this one because this is this this scene right here is probably the most important in my eyes because this is actually the discovery of how 2008 actually. Pretty much should have ha- how it happened. Okay, hi. How are you? Have a seat. Hey, Mr. Bennett from Deutsche Bank. What do we have? So how many people have you talked to about this trade? A few. There's definitely some interest. Oh. My boss would have my ass. And I'm crazy here? Get lost. Which is why you're here talking to us, the wrong number. Sounds like there's a lot of interest. All right. A few people have invited us in just to laugh at me on this deal. Is that you? No. Is that what this is? That's not what this is. That's just how Mark is. Let's see what you got. I'm sorry. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? The cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Okay. You smell money. Okay. Chris. Damn it. Sorry. This is your basic mortgage bond. All right? The originals were simple. They were just thousands of AAA mortgages bundled together, guaranteed by the U.S. government. The modern ones are different. They're private. And they're made up of layers of tranches. Tranche is a French word meaning a portion Highest of something. Double. Triple A is getting paid first. The lowest rated B is getting paid last, taking on defaults first. Now, obviously, if you're buying B's, you can make more money, but they're a little risky. Sometimes they fail. Chris? Somewhere along the line, these B's and double B's went from a little risky to dog stuff. Where's the trash? I'm behind you. I'm talking. Rock bottom FICO scores. No income verification. Adjustable rates. Dog stuff. The default rates are already up from 1% to 4%, fellas. And if they rise to 8%, and they will, a lot of these triple Bs are going to zero too. And that, you're too close, is an opportunity. Okay, you're saying that at 8% the bonds fail and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to 8 it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. How come nobody's talking about this? You're completely sure of the math. Look at him. That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative. My math specialist. Look at him. You notice anything different about him? Look at his face. That's very racist. Look at his eyes. I'll give you a hint. His name's Yang. He won a national math competition in China. He doesn't even speak English. Yeah, I'm sure of the math. Actually, my name's Jiang, and I do speak English. Jared likes to say I don't because he thinks it makes me seem more authentic. And I got second in that national math competition. So you're offering us a chance to short this pile of blocks? How? With something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return. And it's already slowly going bust. 10 to 1, 20 to 1, no way. And no one's paying attention. No one is paying 
attention because the banks are too busy getting paid obscene fees to sell these bonds. But wait, you are the bank. Well, you work for the bank. I bet your margins are pretty nice and fat. Let's not talk about my margins, by the way. Being nice and fat, that's a nice shirt. Do they make it for men? Aren't you the bank? I work for the bank. I don't think like a bank. Big bank, small bank, I like to make money. All right? Let me put it this way. I'm standing in front of a burning house, and I'm offering you fire insurance on it. How can these underlying bonds be as bad as you say? It wouldn't be legal. <clears throat> Nobody knows what's in them. Nobody knows what's in the bonds. I've seen some that are 65% AAA rated that I know for a fact are filled with 95% subprime stuff with fight. Very important. It's the same thing as the UBS swaps. Can I add something quick? Go this, ahead. All right. So what they were looking to short the banks back then as a profit is exactly what every institution in America was trying to do at AMC in 2020 with a guaranteed 20-fold profit margin to see it go bankrupt. And oh, using correct. leverage to do it. Over leverage. Mm -hmm. That's why you saw all these zombie stocks come to fruition out of absolute nowhere. So where they're at right now is Michael Berry, after two years of cost against his portfolio, sitting on a short position of an unrealized potential future gain. Correct. So now the same thing that they're trying to do to get them out of this position is all tied up in these UBS swaps. Everything. The Citadel specifically. Because they're sitting here and trying to buy up whatever the fuck they can from that UBS swap. Because their name is written all over it and it will expose them to no end. But it Mike goes below 550. You want me to really blow your mind? When the market deems a bond too risky to buy, what do you think we do with it? Take a guess. I don't know. You tell me. All right. You think we just warehouse it on the books? No. We just repackage it with a bunch of other stuff that didn't sell and put it into a CDO. A CDO? Yes. A CDO. What is that? This is where we take a bunch of Bs, double Bs, and triple Bs that haven't sold, and we put them in a pile. And when the pile gets large enough, the whole thing is suddenly considered diversified. And then the whores at the rating agency give it a 92, 93% AAA rating. No questions asked. Oh, Say that again. A collateralized debt obligation. It's important to understand because it's what allowed a housing crisis to become a nationwide economic disaster. Here's world famous chef Anthony Bourdain to explain. <laughs> Okay, I'm a chef on a Sunday afternoon, setting the menu at a big restaurant. I ordered my fish on Friday, which is the mortgage bond that Michael Flurry shorted. But some of the fresh fish doesn't sell. I don't know why, maybe it just came out, halibut has the intelligence of a dolphin. So, what am I gonna do? Throw all this unsold fish, which is the triple B level of the bond, in the garbage and take the loss? No way. Being the crafty and morally onerous chef that I am, whatever crappy levels of the bond I don't sell, I throw it to a seafood stew. See, it's not old fish. It's a whole new thing. And the best part is they're eating three-day-old halibut. That is a CDO. Well, I just don't know how these could possibly be collated. So somehow you're like the door of the explorer, and you're the first person who has found this thing. Hold on. So mortgage bonds are dog too. CDOs are dog too. Wrapped in cat too. Yeah, that's right. Institutions treat these CDOs like they're as solid as treasury bonds, and they're going to zero. No, it can't be right. There, there was 500 billion in housing bonds sold last year alone. The ratings agencies, the banks, the government, they're saying they're all asleep at the wheel? Yeah. My whole department's long on this stuff. They call me Chicken Little. They call me Bubble Boy. A's. Zero. B's, zero. Double B's, zero. Triple B's, zero. And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. That is your world economy. There's a point in time 
in which Michael Berry had to make a decision in which he takes probably a 90% better or better loss of his total assets under management to basically say, I was wrong and this isn't going to happen or continue to pay the fees of exposure to his bet to a point of no return, which means at that point, he had to decide if he wanted to cut, eat his losses and still have very little, but enough liquidity to at least survive and try to rebuild off of or go all in. Because once he decided that he was going to go further and ride it out, he had no choice but to ride it out till it was realized. Because bankrupt is bankrupt from that point forward, whether it's a dollar or $30 billion, right? And that was the point in time in which these hedge funds, through Fed liquidity, made a decision that they were right and we were wrong. And they're at a point of no return. They can't back out. So the only thing no. left to do is realize the bankruptcy that's about to be exposed of their willingness and unknowness and ignorance to the power of retail to take a sure thing, a sure bankruptcy, and turn it around into a company that not only survives, but thrives. Well, isn't that interesting? Hence why they try to get people to hop onto NVIDIA or hop onto the crypto with the ETF with BlackRock and Citadel or hop onto these, these bonds <laughs> that, are, that have the swaps in them. I mean... They have to. Yeah, the narrative. It's all about the narrative. It literally, it's 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 trying to get people's liquidity, and then they'll siphon it and swap it back for their toxicity. Oh my goodness, dude! I mean, they have to. There's no, there's no, they have to be able to go ahead and wield this in a way where here. I have to do it this way. I have to go back and forth this way. I have to go ahead and ch get them to buy this. We've given them every type of deal. We've shown them the, you know, the bullshit play that we need to do. We've had all of our, you know, foot soldiers on YouTube that are saying, oh, hey, you, you want to sell this. You want to buy this. They've done everything. And they ain't doing it because they want to. They're doing it because they have to. Yeah, it's it's like yes. the M one finance that hired seventeen hundred freaking paid actors. <laughs> it's, it's like, dude, these these people are pathetic. Like it's it's yeah. just crazy. I, I it, you know it, it, there's one thing that really shows me something is that if AMC is at this lowest and they are this desperate at this level, any sort of volatile move, I mean literally to the upside, no matter where or when. I, I think it's gonna it's just gonna blow them off. I think th there is no gonna be like we if you remember March thirty March uh, twenty twenty two when that when that stupid lull crap happened with the whole committee. You mean the the sneeze? Yeah, the sneeze, the thirty four dollar run to thirty four dollars, and then all, it got shorted down to a new low after that. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I think I think they went all in from that point on even further. And now we're at this all-time low while they, they have all this crap propped up. I mean, all this Ponzi, NVIDIA, all this crap pop, propped up. And you can see by the narrative that it's propped up. that It's, it's any sort of move upside, it's it just, it's, it's going to start the chain reaction. I, I truly believe it. There, not just because AMC can't go any lower, that's not what I mean. But any sort of volatile move because it's so concentrated. The concentration in the pressure that they have they have pretty much went all in it's gonna blow it's it's gonna start the eruption i mean you, there's only so much you can piss the volcano off until it erupts dude their, their I... short position up to this year has been re-swapped into option risk for future locates 
the entire positions, go look, Fintel, go look. If the reported positions are all option wrapped. There's only one hedge fund currently with a short share equity exposure. The rest are options. That's different than last year. Yeah, I do agree with that. So I'm going to read this for DC. Everyone piling in to one of our few brokers helped allow them to report the numbers they needed. I think it would be a good reminder for everyone to screenshot and print out records of your position. Also, back in the day, the push to move the certain brokers was twofold. And two, if there was a blackout, I know there will be backups, but say Fidelity records initially get screwed up, even with the backups, that slows the whole process down. I agree with that. They can't close. That That's what the narrative was to get people out of Robinhood and they disperse to a different type of brokerage so they can manage the event more. That was the original narrative that I, I literally caught. I was like, why, is every, why do they want everybody to leave different brokerages? And then I figure out all these brokerages are all corrupt. It doesn't matter which one. They're all racketeering. It doesn't matter which one you're in. They're all, they're all doing payment for order flow one way or another with citadel or through transactions or through swaps or whatever they're doing back and forth and routing the orders it's, let me it's, throw some more rico in there yahoo finance on friday did a two-hour segment of options trading directed towards retail that they pick as their saturday replay that talks about iron condors, hedging options with call put, lower puts for, for even lower strike puts is a hedge against a, 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 a better um, a hedge against uh, bigger spread put values between the two. Literally talking about retail and options and then using strike prices and future gain values on covered calls in mega sevens. Like it's, it it was all designed to teach retail how to trade options like wall street. Gee, I wonder why maybe because they need retail to hold their bag for them. Real quick, we got 200 in the chat, 200 here, 200. (laughs) Had to give the alarm. I, they're screwed. And this is where the confusion lies because everybody thinks that, oh, it's the bonds. Oh, hey, it's this, or hey, it's that. No one's. If you haven't noticed, they're painting a picture that basically I I didn't do anything wrong. No, I'm I'm the good little boy. James, no. James, can you can mm-hmm. you play this video? It's very important. Mm-hmm. I, pin, I I hope it's very I, important. I pinned it to the top. This is the secret. This is the video. I uh, I didn't post the video like years ago, but. The, the guy that's talking in representation of uh, of Citadel, he's the head, uh, he was the head manager, Jamil Nazarali, who now runs the EDX markets with crypto, with Fidelity, Citadel, and all these other clowns. Can you DM it to I me? Post, I pinned it to the top. I know, but you, uh, can you DM it to me? You just you know, can you, it can you not play yeah, it from play the it video? From that at the store, so. No, I can't play it from there. Making trading decisions. Those are all. Is that the video? Yeah. Before you play that, I want to add one more thing. Also, in that two-hour segment, mm-hmm. there was a segment within that that talked about, oh, yeah, we saw that irresponsible option trading by retail in 2021. And I thought to myself, yeah, last time I checked, everybody, every irresponsible retail holder of options in 2021 beat your asses and made a shit ton of money. So while you're setting your fucking narrative, you might want to realize maybe retail is smarter than you. 
Mm, I know I'm very learned. So James, I put there. I I, I added that video at the end. I made the the key phrase. I made a repeat. I think three times or four times. But if when you play, right, yeah, cool. play it. Ready? Here, here we go. They are not making trading decisions. Those are all made by the computers. So they're not making any decisions with respect to whether an order should be filled, what price it should be filled. That's all done in an automated way. When you click send from your TD Ameritrade account, there's a good chance that Citadel's computers see it. Then they either fill your order or send it out to the Byzantine network of 13 exchanges and 20 plus dark pools to execute it. Of 13 exchanges and 20 plus dark pools to execute it. Of 13 exchanges and 20 plus dark pools to execute it. Of 13 exchanges and 20 plus dark pools to execute it. This is 10 years ago. <laughs> is it Groundhog's Day? I mean, is it Groundhog's Day? Is it Groundhog's Day? I think it's Groundhog's Day. I don't know if I heard correctly, but I'm pretty sure it's Groundhog's Day. 20 plus. I might be mistaken, but I think it's Groundhog's Day. The, if they had 20 plus dark pool venues back then, but this is Citadel routing, by the way. This is literally Citadel manipulating securities through the dark pool trades 10 years ago. Imagine how many they have now. I mean, Citadel has their own. <laughs> they, and I'm pretty sure that I, I, I found the point in that clip, and I think it's Groundhog's Day. I'm pretty sure if Kramer had any hair in 2021 to lose, he would have lost it. He would have lost it on Groundhog's Day, that's for sure. If there was any day, he definitely would have lost it on Groundhog's Day. I hope that we were able to give you guys information i hope that we were able to go ahead and actually dispel what is being portrayed i hope that everybody here learned and more importantly use this information have this information and to go ahead and show family members to go ahead and actually make people understand why they're doing certain things why they need to leverage themselves why they need to hedge their positions whether it's in their 401k or the market or whatever the case may be. But people need to understand what we're about to go into. May the force be with you. Correct. And with that, how about another joke, Murray? Killed with the Wall Street guys. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. There's no punchline. It's not a joke. You're serious, aren't you? You're telling us you killed those three young men on the subway? Mm hmm And why should we believe you? You got nothing left to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. Well, let me get this straight. You think that killing those guys is funny? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. Comedy is subjective, Murray. Isn't that what they say? All of you, the system that knows so much, you decide what's right or wrong the same way that you decide what's funny or not. Well, okay, I, I think I, I might understand that you did this to start a movement, to become a, a symbol. Come on, Murray. Do I look like the kind of clown that could start a movement? I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody is awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. Okay, so that's it, you're crazy. That's your defense for killing three young men? No, they couldn't carry a tune to save their lives. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. But these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne would cried about them on TV? You have a problem with Thomas Wayne. Too. Yes, I do. Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? 
Do you ever actually leave the studio? Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves? They don't. They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys. That we won't werewolf and go wild. You finished? I mean, there's so much self-pity, Arthur. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You're awful. Me? I'm awful? Oh, yeah, how am I awful? Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You're just like the rest of them. You don't know the first thing about me, pal. Look what happened because of what you did, what it led to. There were riots out there. Two policemen are in critical condition. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. Someone was killed today because of what you did. I know. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a it. society that abandons him and beats him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! You get what you fucking deserve! <laughs> remember you guys have a wonderful night and i will talk to you all later this space was downloaded via spacesdown.com visit to download your spaces today